got, I'm gonna put those in right there. And we've got our lungs right here, but I thought rather than use this, we might do some pretend surgery. So I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna get up, whoop, that's the wrong mouse, I keep grabbing the wrong mouse. I'm gonna show you a drawing. Let's see if I can share that for a second. Okay, there we go. So I found this drawing of a cat's internal anatomy. That just means the cat's inside organs. And this is kind of simplistic, but it's a good place for us to start with our game. So I'm gonna stop screen sharing that right now. And I have that same picture on my phone. So I'm gonna copy the cat's internal anatomy with some Play-Doh. So I'm gonna make some lungs for my cat. Now at home, you could just draw an outline of a cat or a dog or a horse or anything that you like and ask your grown-ups for help. And if you just go to Google, you can search for horses inside organs or horses internal anatomy or sharks internal anatomy, any animal you like. And if you don't have Play-Doh, you can use any type of dough that you have like clay at home or maybe you just want to make it out of paper that's okay so I'm gonna make some lungs for my cat so I'm gonna make one set of lungs right there and now I am not particularly good at making the lungs look realistic my little brother is a medical illustrator so that's his job making stuff look realistic but I'm not gonna sweat it because I'm just having fun and you shouldn't sweat it either. If yours doesn't look perfect, I wouldn't worry about it. So the two lungs actually, right, there would be one right here and one right there because the kitty's laying on their side. So my kitty has their lungs. And in fact, I'm gonna give my kitty a trachea and an esophagus. So here is kitty's trachea that leads to the lungs. That's how the air goes all the way down into the lungs. And now I'm gonna make my kitty's stomach. So I've got some other Play-Doh and I'm gonna make my kitty's stomach out of that. So we would have our esophagus. That goes all the way down to your stomach. So the kitty would have one of those too. So there's the kitty's esophagus. And again, this isn't perfect. My brother would probably come and tell me that I was not anatomically correct, but that's what he does for a living, not what I do. So I'm not gonna worry about it. So there we go. Now I'm gonna make the stomach and I'm gonna make the stomach nice and big because the stomach is where we're gonna have pretend surgery. So this is a lot like our pretend brain surgery that we do at school. It's fun to play with. It's not exactly like real surgery, but it's still a fun game to play pretend. So here's my kitty's stomach. This is way bigger than a kitty's stomach would actually be in real life, but I'm just gonna make my kitty's stomach like that for now. Now I have a foreign object, it's literally just cardboard, and I'm gonna hide that foreign object inside the kitty's tummy. So I'm gonna do some surgery in a little bit and pretend that I have to remove this from the kitty's tummy. So there is the kitty's tummy. Oop, my phone timed out. Okay, let's see. I wanna make sure that my kitty has a liver, just like we have livers, so I'm gonna give my kitty a green liver because that's what I can find. Got some green Play-Doh. So the kitty's liver would actually go in between. So I'm just gonna make this liver. This is not the perfect size liver, but that's okay. There's my kitty's liver, just like that. And then let's see, I wanna make sure my kitty has a heart. So I'm gonna make my kitty's heart pink, cause I have pink Play-Doh. Oops, I can get it open. Now, if you want to try and make your own Play-Doh, all the Play-Doh we use at school, I normally make. So this Play-Doh I ordered special, but there's a lot of recipes online. If you ask your grown-ups for permission, you can usually make them out of just salt and like flour, some hot water. Okay, so that's my kitty's heart. It's not the perfect looking heart, but my kitty has a heart. And then I'm gonna skip a lot of the other internal organs. I'm gonna make my bladder, cause we learned about that bladder and how sometimes they have to aspirate urine from the bladder. They have to take urine from the bladder with a syringe. So I'm gonna make a bladder for my kitty. So here is my kitty's bladder. And I'm also gonna make some intestines for my kitty. 
because when the food leaves the kitty's stomach, it has to pass through intestines just like when it leaves our stomach. Okay, so here's my kitty that I'm making. And you can make any animal you want. It's a great way to practice learning about anatomy by making it out of clay or making it out of paper. So there are my intestines. Now intestines are actually a lot longer than this and they're not exactly shaped like this. But I'm not going to sweat it. I'm not trying to be a perfect artist. I'm not trying to be a medical illustrator. I'm just trying to have fun. Okay, so there's my kitty's intestines. So now we're going to have some pretend surgery. So before surgery, there's a couple things that I would need to do if I was a vet. First of all, my hair would have to get pulled back. That's one, so I would pull it back, and I would actually have a cap that would cover my hair so that no hair falls into my patient when I'm doing surgery. That would be terrible. Then, I wouldn't be wearing normal clothes. I would be wearing scrubs, and then I would probably have a surgical gown that I would put on over my scrubs because I don't want bacteria and other things to get inside my patient when I have to open them up. And also, just like we've learned how to wash our hands, surgeons wash all the way up to their elbows with antibacterial scrubs. So you would have to wash your hands just like we've been learning, just like this, just like this, but all the way up to your elbows. And in fact, my little brother, because he had to dual major in pre-med, when he washes up for dinner, he still washes all the way to his elbows. So you would wash up to your elbows, and then, depending on the type of surgery, we would have to give our kitty some, some drugs to help them relax beforehand so they'd kind of be a little out of it because we don't want them to be nervous and freaking out. A person, you can tell them what's going to happen and then they won't be so nervous, but a kitty, they don't understand. And then, depending on the type of the surgery, if the kitty needs to have full anesthesia, we also, when we give them full anesthesia, we'd put a breathing tube down the kitty's throat and it would keep pressure in the lungs and keep uh, oxygen going into the lungs. And we would have a monitor to monitor the kitty's heart. And so just like at a human's hospital, there would be an anesthesiologist that's a doctor and their whole job is just to monitor the patient in surgery and make sure that their lungs are working correctly, make sure that their heart is beating and that their blood pressure is the way it should be, that oxygen is getting to parts of their body. So we might need to do that if our patient. So we would do that. I'm not going to do that because our patient's made of Play-Doh. So then when we would come in, we would have all sterile, sterile equipment. Now this is just my little plastic knife. It's not sterile and it's not a real scalpel, but I'm going to pretend that it's a sterile scalpel. So everything that we have would be sterilized and you could only come in and touch it after you had thoroughly scrubbed down and you had your surgical gown and your hair was back in your hairnet and you would put on sterile gloves and everything would be sterilized. So now I'm going to come in and I've got my scalpel and remember you're going to hold your scalpel like this right it's not like when we would cut food we don't go like that and i've seen some people in brain surgery go like this no surgeon goes like this we're going to try and hold our pretend scalpel like that so before we would cut in because our kitty has lots of fur we would shave so i'm going to pretend that i have a shaver it's going to be my marker bzz, bzz, bzz. so i shave away that fur and then we would make a small incision. In fact, we wouldn't see most of the kitty. We would just have this part shaved and then we would just make the incision as big as we needed it to be. And we would come in and really careful, we would look for that foreign object that's in there. Now I'm not doing the best job because I have a plastic knife, but I'm gonna pretend that I have lots of special surgical equipment and now, I found the foreign object in my kitty's tummy, so I'm going to pull it out. There we go. There's my foreign object. And now I've removed it successfully, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to close. Well, actually, I'm probably gonna suture or stitch the stomach back together first. 
So I'm going to have, I have a little toy needle and thread. Oops, I just dropped it. Little toy needle and toy surgical thread. So I would take my toy thread like that. Oops. And the first thing we would need to do is we probably not use this. We probably use these things called folds that doctors would put in to hold anything together. Because we can't just have, you can't just have a big old cut in the stomach and leave it so we would probably suture that together and then we would actually to close we would start going like well let's see I have this little toy suture thing here so we would go in one side like that let's see if I can pull it through yep and then now this is not exactly how surgery would work. You wouldn't go up and down like when you're sewing, but right, this one's not very flexible. You would wanna try to go in and then you would come out the other side. And then this is this type of stitches. Sometimes the stitches dissolve, meaning they get broken down in the body and they don't need to be taken out. But let's say that our kitty didn't have dissolving stitches when he came back. We would examine, make sure that he didn't have any infection, any signs of anything going wrong. And then when he was starting to heal, we would actually snip, snip, snip. And then we'd pull those stitches out just like that.